This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hey everybody, it is Brittany and Kelly, and we are doing our first Q&A with you guys. Today we are going to ask each other some questions about television, since that is what we are doing for our season one. So Kelly, do you want to start with your first question? Sure. What is your all-time favorite cartoon or animated series? Hmm. That is difficult for me. Are we talking, like, any animated series or cartoon as in, like, children's? I think it can be children's or adults. Let's just say, what's your favorite children's cartoon and what's your favorite adult-oriented animated series? Okay. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Well, growing up, I was obsessed with Garfield and Friends. They used to have, I don't know, and... It was a a show they did Garfield and then like in between they did some kind of farm. Yeah, cartoon I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about because I watched the same thing. I was obsessed with that cartoon and then they always did the holiday specials and the Garfield Christmas special is one of my favorites to this day. Adult. That one is difficult too because I want to say The Simpsons. Because of nostalgia, like, I remember watching it with my cousin when I was really young and saying a curse word and him having to tell me, uh, you're not allowed to say that. (laughs) But honestly, I think that Bob's Burgers has surpassed that for me now. I love Bob's Burgers. That was what I was thinking your answer was going to be. Yeah. I was always jealous because my brother... He's nine years older than me, and him and my cousin Sean both got to watch Beavis and Butthead, and I was not allowed to watch it because I was too young. So when it came back around recently, do you remember when MTV, like, rebooted it a few years ago? Yes. I was so excited because I was like, (laughs) yes, I'm allowed to watch it. I can do whatever I want. I'm an adult. It was awesome. Yeah, and that actually, that was, it was pretty good. I watched some of those. I watched all of them. That was when we still had cable. So I guess it was yep. more than a few years ago, but it seems like not that long ago. My wife drives me crazy with Beavis and Butthead, though, because she's still, we have a fire pit it, on our back patio, and every time I light it, she always goes, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big old nerd, though. So, same question. Uh, your favorite childhood cartoon and adult animated? My favorite childhood, I would have to say, like, Looney Tunes, because that's all I can think of. Classics. Yeah, like, you know, Bugs Bunny. You know what Looney Tunes is. Oh, yeah, But I do. for our not-so-old listeners... Peppy Le Pew. Peppy Le Pew was my favorite. Tweety Bird, Sylvester, Wiley Coyote, yep. Elmer Fudd, all of those. Those were awesome. I don't know, like, we never had cable growing up, so that's really all I remember for, like, childhood. I also liked, when I was older, when we had cable, I liked Pepper Ann and Recess. Did you, mm-hmm. wa- did you watch those? Yep. Yeah, I liked those. Yeah, I can relate to the no cable. Where I'm from, it's the boondocks. To this day, they cannot get high-speed internet because they have not gotten the fiber optic cables. Oh, probably (laughs) in that area. Where I used to live, I bet they don't have that either because we had seven acres. We were like half a mile off the road, the main road, so we were Mm -hmm. back in the woods and like That's a lot of what I did. Like, a lot of people saying, like, oh, we used to run around outside in the woods. Like, even though I'm technically a millennial, like, I did that shit. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I was, I was a hick. So, F that, millennial haters. (laughs) Yeah, you better censor yourself. (laughs) Okay, so favorite adult 
oh, themed. Definitely Bob's Burgers. I have to yeah. agree. The first time I watched that show, I was like, this show is disgusting. I hate this show. <laughs> it's blah, it's blah, stupid. Blah. Yeah. Like, it's so dumb. And then I watched it. I don't know why. Like, if I don't like a show, I watch it again. I do the same thing. I just thing. keep watching it because I'm like, especially if it's something popular. I'm like, a lot of people like this. There has to be a reason why I haven't given it enough time. Whatever. So I keep watching it. And then I was like, this show is hilarious. And I loved it after that. Yeah. All of the characters are funny on that show. Yeah. Every single one of them. Even the guest characters are funny. Yeah. I love Tina. But all the characters. Oh, and also, oh my God, Linda. Oh my God, I Linda, couldn't think yes. of her name for a second. I am such a Linda. She's like, I've only had half a bottle of wine, like three. Yeah. She says, like, I've only had three halves of a bottle of wine, or something stupid, or like, <laughs> mommy doesn't get drunk. She just gets fun. Yeah. Like, she says the funniest things, and I relate to them so much. Also, she sings everything. Oh my god, I do that! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, so my question for you. What was the last TV show you gave up on before it ended? Grey's Anatomy! Grey's Anatomy. I kind of thought you were going to say that. Yeah, because you were there... I mean, you weren't there, but I texted you when I gave it up, and I was like, why do I keep watching this? I cry at the end of every episode. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it anymore. I'm not going to do it. It's like self-abuse. Why yeah. am I watching this when I'm crying every time? So I gave it up. Haven't watched it since, and I don't care. Also, I will not even watch the first episode to start This Is Us. <laughs> because I know everyone cries at the end of every episode of that, so I'm not going to do that to myself. It is a very well-written show, uh -huh. though. It is good. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I mean, the good news is with that show, like, it starts out with you knowing that the dad dies. Yeah. but You know, they do flashbacks. Just... It took me a while to get into that show, too, because of the flashbacks and stuff. You, you, it's something you kind of got to get used to to understand what's going on. But once you do, it's really good. All I've ever heard about that show is it's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. I'm not. No, I, I'm not interested. Pass. It, it is sad. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> so I think that the last TV show that I gave up on was Once Upon a Time. I knew that was going to be the answer. Yeah, I'm so disappointed in that show. That show started out, I loved it. It started going downhill, and I still, like, I kept with it. I really, really tried. But they had, the the main character, Emma Swan, got with Captain Hook, and I understood the appeal of him. He was kind of like the bad boy, and he, he a very good-looking guy, I cannot remember the guy's name who plays him, but... I absolutely get the appeal, but then, like, they took a very strong character. You could, you, at the beginning, you could have compared her to Buffy Summers from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but she got with this guy, and then all of a sudden, she just, I don't know. And the, the, the theme of the show was kind of love is weakness, but they shouldn't have actually tried to prove that. They should have proven that. It's not. Yeah. So, yeah, I gave up on it before the main characters even left. Uh, well, not all of the main characters left. Uh, Lana Perea, who played the evil queen, she stayed, which she was my favorite anyway. But it just wasn't enough to keep me. Yeah, that's kind of how I was at the end of How I Met Your Mother. Like, it kind of went downhill. Like, not like a steep downhill but it wasn't as good as it was before but I just kept hanging on to it because it was my favorite show and actually the finale episode I didn't watch it for like a year after it dropped and <laughs> every time Chad would get mad at me he'd be like I'll tell you how how I met your mother ends <laughs> <laughs> like he would hold it over my head and I finally watched it when I was pregnant with Cruz and I cried my mom was here and I cried so much 
Oh. I know that wasn't the question, but... No, I'm just trying to think. I didn't feel like it was that long ago that How I Met Your Mother went off the air. Yeah, it was like more than four years ago. Because Cruz was going to be four this year and he wasn't born yet. And I waited a long time to watch it. Okay, season nine, which was the final season, premiered on September 23rd, 2013. Oh, wow. So I'm assuming it ended sometime in 2013 or maybe 14. Probably 14, yeah. March 31st, 2014. So yeah, I waited almost an entire calendar year to watch the finale because I didn't want it to end that bad. (laughs) That's insane. Okay, so... (laughs) Is it my turn to ask a question? I, yeah, okay. I think so. What is your biggest guilty pleasure show? I was going to say Big Brother, but actually I'm going to say The Challenge on MTV. It used to be like real Road Rules world, versus Road Rules, Real yeah. World. Yeah. Yeah, they they're still going with that and I I don't know why, but I love it. I watch every season. I have a lot, I feel like. Um, yeah. The Masked Singer, which ended, and I did not guess any of them right, but I still liked it a lot. You didn't get uh, Tommy Chong? No. Ricky Lake? Nope. See, I know all of this because every time someone was voted off, Yahoo put an article out. <laughs> Yeah, like, I didn't even, I watched the first few episodes, but then after that I just checked Twitter after it aired. (laughs) I really, so badly in my heart, wanted the Peacock to be Neil Patrick Harris. Oh. But it, I knew it wasn't gonna be, but I wanted it to be, (laughs) because I thought that would be perfect for him. He has a really amazing voice. Yes, he does. Um, so that show... Naked and Afraid, Survivor, and, like, Jersey Shore, Real Housewives, any of that trash. I love that shit. I like some of those. Like, you mentioned The Hills oh in my the God, last yeah. episode. I love The um, Hills. I watched that for a while, but the whole Spencer and Heidi thing just got to me too much. Oh my god, I I know, and now I follow them on Instagram, and they're, like, normal now. Well, normal-ish now. But Heidi, for a minute there, she was crazy. She had so much plastic surgery, dude. Yeah. Ridiculous. I'm surprised her body could even carry a child. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I thought Spencer was a dick, too, though, so... Like, she had her bones, like, shaved off to make herself skinnier, and then she carried a child. Like, I feel like your bones would break. Yeah, I... She definitely got out of control. Yeah. It it was heading down to Michael Jackson. Yeah, and then she wanted to have, like, letter H boobs for Heidi... Like, oh, that, yeah. that's unreal, dude. That is crazy. That's, ugh. There's a Strange Addiction Too much. episode. Oh, that's another guilty pleasure. Strange mm-hmm. Addiction, Intervention, and there's another one on Prime. I think it's just called Addicted or something. It's a lot like Intervention. All those shows. Which I do truly empathize with the people that are struggling but I like watching it in a shallow way because it makes me feel better about my soul. Is that bad? <laughs> no, no. I absolutely get it because there are days when I feel like I am batshit crazy and then I watch like a woman eating a sponge and I feel a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not the worst person no. in the world. Uh, what? The one TV show you can always watch reruns of no matter how many times you've seen it. I have a lot. Himium. How I Met Your <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Um The Office. Yeah, The Office is good. Um, right now, I it's not over yet, but this isn't 
on our official podcast, so I can say whatever I want. Shit's Creek. If you yeah. are not watching that or you don't know who Dan Levy is, stop what you're doing right this second and look it up. He is gorgeous. He I will agree with that. The man is gorgeous. I know what you're thinking, his dad and American Pie and his eyebrows, but oh, he's so gorgeous. Okay, but can I say something at the risk of sounding really weird? Yeah. Eugene Levy in Schitt's Creek is a good He's looking attractive. guy. attractive. Yeah. He is! Yeah! He dresses all nice and... Right. In American Pie, they make... Like, they dress him down. Yeah. They make him look like the nerdy well, dad. Plus but it's realistically... Like the ni- early 90s or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Too. Like, look at how we dress then. I mean, we were kids, but look how our parents dressed us as opposed to how we dress our kids now. Yeah. I guess, uh, also, I kind of like the salt and pepper Harry's got going on now. Yeah. 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 For an older dude, he's definitely attractive. And he's funny to boot. That guy is funny. Really funny. But Dan Levy, like, is in line, and I hope to god dan levy that you're listening right now but you're not because you definitely are not a patreon supporter of our show (laughs) but i pray to god that one day you might be but you are up there with fucking lucille ball with your facial expressions your facial expressions are to die for i agree with that a lot of his comedy and like line delivery has a lot to do with his facial expressions like exactly like what abby said about lucy like she can say all this shit without saying a word dan levy aka david rose same like he can say things without saying things i'll i'll get down off my little soapbox now but i love him um i also want to point out kelly that my the tweet that I put out that you were so drunk you just asked me if Mississippi was a state. Yeah. Things you should have heard podcast just <laughs> commented just commented it's not just a river. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay. I think it what did you answer that or did I, I didn't answer that yeah, one. Sorry. You didn't that answer. was my question for you. What's your Wait, what was it? No, that was my question. What's your biggest guilty pleasure show? And you answered it, and I answered it. So now it's your turn. Kelly, that was not the last question asked. What was the last? Oh, the last. You're right. (laughs) I'm sorry, everyone. You're so drunk, you're time traveling. You went back in time. Sorry. I was thinking of Dan Levy as a guilty pleasure. My bad. No. So let's let's switch it up with this one. What do you think is the one TV show I can always watch reruns of? What do I think? Oh. Yeah, what do you think is mine? Hands down, Golden Girls. Duh. Yep. Yep. It does not take a rocket scientist to pick that one out. Anybody who knows me knows. I am obsessed. That is why Golden Girls is the top tier (laughs) on the donation. (laughs) Yep. And guys. And guys. Yes, I didn't want to discriminate. Although I... I did Silver Sisters, but I just felt like, you know, Patty and Selma. Yeah, whatever. So, yeah. Also, I was blown away. This uh, You guys are getting a sneak peek before the Simpsons episode, but there was an episode where they shook the ash out of their hair. Their hair is not gray. Oh, yikes. I did not know It's that. just filled with cigarettes. Uh, is ash. that show over? <laughs> no. Then why are we doing it? Because it changed the course of television. Okay, because I was going to say, like, I'm pretty sure they still have new episodes. Yeah, we're doing The Simpsons and Survivor. And then the next season, our segue. We're going to do a little segue uh, episode, and then I think uh, we're going to go into movies after that. (gasps) Spoiler alert! Um... Okay, so it's your turn. What is your top TV blind spots, meaning famous shows you've never seen? I'll have to think about it. You want me to go? Yeah, you you go first. Okay, Game of Thrones. 
The Wire, 24, House of Cards, which me and Chad were just talking about Kevin Spacey, Spacey yeah. today and how he's a rapist or molester or something sexual because he was All on, of the above. <laughs> he was on a show, something Chad was watching yesterday, and I was like, oh, he's in trouble for blah, 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 blah. And then we couldn't really remember exactly what it was, but it was definitely something sexual, and he got cut from his show. Good job, yeah. Netflix. Yep. Good looking out. But anyway, yep. that show's supposed to be really good, but I've never watched it. I watched the first few epi- or episodes, the first few seasons of it, and it it was good, but I kind of fell out of it before that whole thing took a turn for the worse so i i wasn't really heartbroken i watched the first episode like three times and i couldn't get past him breaking that dog's neck i don't remember that you don't no how did i miss that i never would have continued watching that show this i'm pretty sure you know how my memory is but i'm almost 100 percent sure that this dog gets hit or something by a car and he goes out there he breaks the dog's neck so that it dies without like suffering but I just I couldn't get past it Yeah, I don't remember that but if if it is in that sense maybe I would have continued I'm a little it's a little different because it's putting it out of his misery but right yeah yeah I mean I'm sure that's not why he did it because that character's a son of a bitch but like, it would have bothered me a lot less. It's not like he just walked up to some right, woman walking right. her Yorkshire Terrier and snapped its neck. Right. Which also, let me just say, Dexter, which I've seen every episode at least twice, I had to watch the first episode at least four times before I got into it because I could not get past, like, the first scene of that episode when he's dragging those dead bodies in of... The person he's going to murder, the kids he raped and murdered, I can't. Like, it took me forever to get past just that first one. Which, I mean, I guess, according to your mom, we shouldn't have watched it anyway. Ooh, you know what show we should watch? I mean, we should talk about that's over. Bates Motel. Mm, I see. That was one I was going to say. I've never seen that. Oh my gosh, put it on your list. Even I've okay. seen that and I hate horror shit. Yeah, I'm writing it down now. Bates Motel. I think uh, Vera is on that. Vera, yep. Who, if I ever have a daughter, I will name them after her. I'm surprising myself that I haven't seen that because Psycho, the original Psycho, is one of my favorite movies. Then you need to watch the show because the yeah. show is awesome. Yep, you're right. Norman is such a fucking creep. Which, I mean, he's supposed to be, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which, it reminded me because you called your mom mother. Which, if my boys try to call me that, I would be like, no. You call me mom. Or mama. Not mother. The next time that she does this shit to me, I'm going to pull a a Dorothy and I'm going to be like, Shady Pines, ma. (laughs) So, Bates Motel, you've yep. never seen. Bates Motel, I have never seen an episode of Mad Men. <gasps> I, do you remember <laughs> that woman I was just telling you the other day looked like Abby? Yep. She's from Mad Men. Oh. But, when she was on Mad Men, she was a lot curvier. Like, her hips were huge. I don't know what she did, but she does not look like that on good girls she lost a lot of weight in her face and hips but her boobs are still big so they must be fake yeah but i kept thinking she looked like the character's name is joan harris on mad men i kept thinking she looked like her but i was like no she's way too like skinnier than that person which i mean i know people can lose weight but her curves were like you know her thing yeah but yeah it's her uh, my last one is going to be The Voice. You know, I haven't watched that either. Yeah. 
my grandma, Grandma Joy, which, by the way, I've already determined that Grandma Joy stories are going to be a Patreon exclusive. Yeah, I was thinking that because when you were asking for ideas for the tears, I went back and listened to all of our podcasts because I'm a narcissist. No, because I was looking for clues for what to name the tears. But anyway, and you were talking about grandma joy on the golden girls episode and you said oh i might tell some stories sometime and i was thinking oh that'd be perfect for patreon i also i'll have to uh fact check this but i think that i have mentioned her in every episode (laughs) that's probably true because she is that she's iconic i don't i haven't even met the woman and i'm like yep i want to be her when i grow up I've already decided once she gets back from Florida this year, she's totally coming and we're getting together. We'll meet at uh, our our favorite Mexican restaurant. We'll all go. Yes. We'll get margaritas. That location? Yes. That one place? Okay, That one place, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so my question to you. What TV character can you most relate to? Ooh. I don't know. I'm thinking. I don't know, because all the shows that I've watched recently, either the person is single, or has cheated on their spouse, or has been cheated on by their spouse. So it's very hard for me to answer that. Yeah, that would be difficult. Maybe you... You can be like, well... or may, take, How about this? You can take... Uh, characteristics from different characters if you need to. Okay. Then I would say Pam Beasley. I can definitely see that. (laughs) Slash Rose. Slash Lily on How I Met Your Mother. Uh, oh! Freaking Linda Belcher. Duh. Linda Belcher, yeah, you are her. I am her. And you know what? She would never cheat on Bob. Never. She would never cheat on Bob. You're right. She loves him, mustache and all. Yep. Actually, when he shaved his mustache, she was freaked oh out. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, she was. But he did it for a good reason, didn't he? Yeah. I would say I am... Part Dorothy Spornak, uh, part Angela from The Office <laughs> because, of, because of her love for cats. I can see that. Since we're, ta- we're in our debate right now on people being planners and being spontaneous, I will say I'm part Frankie from Grace and Frankie. <gasps> Grace and Frankie, I forgot about them. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty spontaneous when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, I don't like sit on the beach and do shrooms or anything like that, but uh yeah. I don't either, but I feel like Lily Tomlin is my spirit animal. Oh, yes. Like if I could not be a responsible adult and just do whatever the fuck I wanted, I would be her. But since I am a responsible adult, I have to be Kelly. Yeah, or somewhat That's true. somewhat yeah, responsible like, adult. Let's be real. If if I like didn't have a toddler, mm-hmm. if I was her age and I was retired and I didn't have a job, and I might do shrooms on the beach. I don't yeah. know. We could do them together. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I would be like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I think that that's, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head, because I'm probably, like, when I say that, I'm probably, like, 90% Dorothy, 5% Angela, 5% Frankie. So, yeah. Yeah. And what about Britney Spears? Oh, Britney Spears, but she's not a television character. I know, I know, I know. She did guest star in How I Met Your Mother. Oh, that's true. I remember that. She did. There was a lot of guests on How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, didn't uh, J-Lo? Jennifer Lopez. I don't think she goes by J-Lo now. She did, and on that episode, she was the author of a book that was similar to a book 
that me and my friend Kate did a report on in our relationships class in college, which the book we did a report on was called Why Men Love Bitches. (laughs) And the book that J-Lo talked about, I forget what it was called, but it was very similar. All right, I think it's your question. Mine's kind of similar to your question. It was, who is your all-time favorite TV character? Oh, favorite TV character. Oh, I will say Willow Rosenberg from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I loved her. I know you're probably not a Buffy fan. but uh, Let's go back to what is your top TV blind spot? <laughs> I have not watched Never seen that it. ever, but I will soon for this podcast. So, so here's my thing with Buffy. So I watched that from the start when I was young. I loved that show from the very beginning. Going back and watching it, I feel like I have to tell people because that's one of the shows that uh, I I tell people that they need to watch, but. I always tell them you have to give it a few episodes because of the time frame in which it was made. It's very campy, so you kind of have to get past that and actually listen to the dialogue and everything because it's such a well-written show. But Willow starts out as like a computer nerd, and then she goes into kind of witchcraft because her best friend is a slayer and she's like all powerful and so you know she's trying to help out she goes into witchcraft she ends up getting addicted to magic they use magic as kind of a metaphor for drugs and stuff like that and so she has to go to like magic rehab and all of this and she ends up saving the world at the end and I just think that it's such a great character art to go from computer nerd that literally everybody makes fun of, her mom makes her own dresses and stuff like that, to, like, literal goddess who is saving the world. So, I'm gonna go with her. That's good. Can I go to the bathroom? Yes. (laughs) Have you not had to go this entire time? I have not drank as much beer as you have. Oh, okay. (laughs) Hey, guys. This is Venice, and I've got a message from a friend of mine about my favorite podcast. It's your boy, Flavor, Flav, and Full Effect. Check this out, everybody. I want y'all to go check out TJ. What's good, everybody? TJ Johnson here from Voice from the Underground. I am the most handsome. Big ass. And I'm smoking my cigar, of course. You know what I'm saying? The Josh. You pick me up in an Uber and a PT Cruiser, I'm calling Lyft. <laughs> they be fighting the power talking about social issues politics you know what i'm saying and we're not even that good right we're terrible terrible <laughs> tangents all over the place and not only that but they be keeping the fun with the sports music comics and movies too am i allowed to I talk think, i think no not right now <laughs> shut up just... colonizer <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying you on twitter at VFU podcast. So you can find them. You can find them. So check one, two. This is Flavor Flav. Yeah, boy. Okay. What Flav was trying to say is check out Voice from the Underground on your favorite podcast network. Voice from the Underground. Okay. I'm switching to Pedialyte. <laughs> um. So, two things. The witchcraft thing makes me think about me saying, get out of here, ghost. I'm going to punch you in the face. (laughs) And the book that J-Lo's character wrote on How I Met Your Mother was, of course you're still single. Take a look at yourself, you dumb slut. Oh. Which is pretty similar to why men love bitches. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. So, same question. Who is your all-time favorite oh, TV character? I don't know. Um, I don't know. That's a hard one to answer. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I like Amy on Superstore. Oh, yeah. Superstore. I like all 
the girls on Good Girls. I like Jenna Fisher on Office. I like... I don't know, I'd have to say on How I Met Your Mother, my favorite character is Barney. Even though he's not the nicest. Yeah. I think he's funny. Well, and again, that character is flushed out pretty well. Like, yeah. they... He starts out as just being a grade A jerk, but they kind of yeah get better with that. Um, I like Michael Scott. I like Frankie on Grace and Frankie. I don't know. I like everybody. Yes, except Dwight. <laughs> except Dwight. Do you want to address our Patreon question? Sure. Now that's a good segue. Okay, so our patreon question comes from elizabeth hall thank you for donating elizabeth hall the question is why does kelly hate dwight so much his character evolves the most in the office you cannot deny his love for his co-workers okay so as far as the office goes i don't actually hate dwight i do agree that for the purposes of The Office, he is a good character. I understand why they wrote him into the story. He does evolve a lot. But in real life, I had a co-worker that reminded me a lot of Dwight. He was very socially awkward, which again, probably was not his fault. But it was to an extreme and I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, but to work with this person was impossible not impossible because we did it but it was very difficult and I would not wish that on anyone so I feel bad for the office workers on the show even though they're not real um I just want to say Kelly I am right here <laughs> it's not you you do not need to be talking about me in that way so my question to you is, who is your all-time biggest TV crush? Oh my god, David Rose. David Rose. Duh. I kind of knew that one. <laughs> but we got into it early. I know. You, you revealed it too early. I didn't know that was going to be a question. I know, we did not vet these questions to each other. <laughs> this is all, we're winging it. I could come up with some more. Yeah. Go ahead. Desmond Harrington. Yeah, he's a good looking fella. AKA Detective Quinn on Dexter. Um, oh, on Good Girls, this is really ridiculous, but I think the guy with the neck tat is attractive if he didn't have the neck tat. Yeah, he's a cute guy. And he's just, he has that like bad boy, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess that's it. I can't okay. think of what other TV shows I watch. It's hard to think on the spot. It is. Uh, that's why I'm giving you leniency instead of just choosing one. Jim Halper? Yeah, I can see that. Especially, okay, so John Krasinski, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Jim is cute. John Krasinski... <laughs> He's a little little higher quality than Jim Halpert. Paul Rudd in This Is 40. Mm-hmm. That's a movie. Oh, shit. You're, You're going right. into next season. <laughs> um. <gasps> Aaron Paul, a.k.a. Jesse Pinkman. Yep. Science bitch. I love him. <laughs> I think that's it for me. Okay. What about you? My all-time biggest TV crush is probably Jennifer Jero from Criminal Minds. Uh, I guess Cruz agrees with that. I was going to say, is someone being <laughs> murdered in your house? Nope. <laughs> Just an angry toddler. <laughs> uh, yeah, so JJ. That's I don't know who that is. That's what they call her on the show. Uh, she's played by AJ Cook. Google it. She She is very, very pretty. Um, let me think. I also really think that Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy, McSteamy. Oh, McSteamy. I think he's McSteamy. Yep. 
I think he's an attractive man anytime he was shirtless on that show. And um any any TV guest appearance that Jamie Lee Curtis has done, that character. <laughs> oh, she's on um New Girl. Yep. So I think that's about it. Yeah, AJ Cook's okay. It's it's more the character though. Like we're talking about specifically character. I try to explain that to my wife all the time because she's like, You are obsessed with AJ Cook and it's like, No, I'm not. I'm obsessed with JJ. It's a fictional person. Alright, so your turn. Um what show cancellation broke your heart? Oh, I have a good answer for this. Are you ready? Yeah. Alf. Oh. And I will tell you why. Because that show was canceled. Like, they didn't know it was going to get canceled. And so the very last episode of Alf is Alf out in a field. He's out there to meet up with his spaceship, his Melmac people or whatever were supposed to meet him and the FBI intercepted the signal and the FBI took Alf into custody and that is the last time you see him scared getting into the back of an FBI van. Oh, that's sad. That's how the show ends. So you just picture like the FBI got him and they're dissecting him. They killed him and they're taking out all his organs and everything else. Like, I still, I can't get over it. Someone needs to reboot that or pick it up somewhere because <laughs> I have bad images. <laughs> Alf. Also, as a side note to Alf, um, so when I was young, I was very naive, and my dad convinced me that Alf wasn't a puppet, that he was actually real, and that he was a baby Bigfoot, <laughs> and that they just said that he was a puppet so that people didn't freak out that Sasquatches exist. And I believed him for a long time because Alf blinks and his ears move and everything else. And I could not put together how someone, like if he was a puppet, yeah, like his mouth would move. But both arms moved and his mouth moved and he blinked and his ears moved. So I was convinced that this was true. That's funny. So what TV show cancellation broke your heart? I don't know. You don't have a heart? I don't have a heart. <laughs> That's right. Well, I don't even know what shows were canceled. Yeah, all of the shows that you like, it sounds like they they went the whole they went the distance. Yeah, I'm really good at picking shows. That's why. Oh, um, Arrested Development. Oh, yep. Brothers and Sisters. I didn't watch that one. I watch that with my mom sometimes. <gasps> the Oblongs. Did you ever watch that? Oh, yes. I love that. That one little girl had a dick on her head. She had a dick on her head? Yeah, I think so. She does. I did <laughs> not know that until just now. Yeah. Also, I love Jean Smart. She was the voice of the mom. Oh, my God. She does have a dick on her head. Yep. You missed that the entire time you watched that show. <laughs> I guess. I just thought it was a cowlick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so last question. What TV show do you insist everyone you know should watch? Uh, Schitt's Creek. Yeah, I know that for a fact because literally everybody... That Kelly sees when I'm around, she asks them, are you watching this show? <laughs> okay, I'm really a little bit disappointed, though, because I can't watch the new season, I guess, until it comes to Netflix. Because on the Pop app, it is only the first episode is unlocked. Oh, yeah, a lot of uh, platforms do that. Yeah. And I don't pay for cable television, so I don't have a login. So if anybody out there has a pop app TV login, you want to send it my way, I won't say no. Dan Levy, if you want to send me like copies on DVD or swag, whatever, I don't, 
I'll say yep. yes. Sign some stuff. We love you. Anyway, what about you? Uh, I forgot the question. Uh, TV show that you insist everybody watches. <laughs> Sorry. What is wrong with us? <laughs> We've been drinking and it's getting late and my kids are screaming. So I would probably, I'll go back to Buffy. I think that it's it's a show that I, I like science fiction, but regardless of whether you like science fiction or not, there's so many like metaphors in that show. I don't know. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to like subtext, metaphors. Like it, it's not right there on the surface. You really have to think about it. And Buffy is kind of that type of show. Like you can watch it and analyze it. And it's also a show that. To this day, I mean, I don't do a lot of extensive research, but to this day, I cannot pinpoint any plot holes in that show. It is that well written. So, yep, I'm going to go with Buffy. Well, I think that that's pretty much all we got for you guys for now. We are going to be doing a Q&A based on questions that we get from uh, Twitter and Facebook that will be coming to you soon. Uh, we went ahead and we did the first one today because it was a TV-related question, but really it's opened up to anything. Oh. You guys can ask anything you want. And uh, within reason, <laughs> yeah. we will answer anything. So we will be back next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.